everyone. This is our room here to talk with Margaret, who is currently part of our exhibition online, Interchanging Lives, Constructing Home. Uh, so Margaret, can you tell us a little bit about your work? Sure. So um, my work is about the experience of wearing clothes, um, the performance that is almost inherent in wearing clothes. Um, I also think a lot about self-representation, image distribution, and um, also increasingly collapsing the divide between DIY sewing and the home sewing uh, movements um, and the culture around that and design culture. Um, so what I'm trying to do with my practice um, in throughout specific projects, but also more generally, is to decolonize dress by making available tools that allow a maker, so potentially someone like me who sews, um, to or a wearer, so anyone who wears clothes, which is the majority of us, um, agency in the making and wearing of clothes. So in research, this looks like carefully uh, studying commercial garment patterns, understanding the language, and even the presumed knowledge on the part of the sewer who comes across a pattern to make a garment uh, that they choose. And in theory, I manipulate expectations around who or what body should wear a given garment and even how they should wear that garment. And then in practice, um, people try on garments and I offer opportunity for, for people to reflect on the wearing of that garment. So this might look like a questionnaire where I list prompts and, um, and then folks are invited to answer those prompts in any way that they choose um, just to, to think about what it was like for them to actually have that garment on their body and to have the fabric on their body. Um, so I work primarily in textiles, um, but I also work in other media that is in service to my textile work. So for example, processes that I use are dyeing of fabrics, um, some natural dyeing, but also chemical dyeing, um, installation, performance, uh, as well as um, garment construction. So all of these are in service to showing my textile work. Um, I would say I understand 3D better than 2D, so I use a lot of draping techniques to understand how a garment fits if I'm making it for myself, um, how it fits on my body. And so the process of fitting is very much reliant on the human form to, as I'm going through the process of making a garment, to make alterations. Um, I really want to understand how a garment feels and how it responds to movement. So that's always something that I'm thinking about when I'm making a garment. And um, whether a garment is utilitarian or made for aesthetic purposes or both, that is equal concern to me. I've always had a relationship to fabric and to wearing clothes. Um, I've for most of my life, I had the privilege to choose what I want to wear. Um, and so my practice now is fulfilling an obsession that is really lifelong. I, um, my mom, when I was younger, sewed some of my clothing. And I remember going with her to Joanne Fabrics and picking out fabric and picking out patterns. But, um, but I've always been connected to fabric and really inspired by fabric. And as I've developed my practice and as I um, went through my studies I was able to learn more about the origins of fabric, the history of print and dye techniques and the origins of specific patterns as well um, that can lead or that can provide meaning to um, a given outcome, to a given project. I look closely at the fashion and textiles industries which are being held accountable or at least called out for practices that are at worst um, deadly and at their least very harmful to people and to the environment. Through this call for change, I'm, as I mentioned earlier, interested in the visibility around DIY sewing and home sewers. 
and especially in the age of COVID-19. I think we've been seeing a lot of home sewers who are sewing masks, um, whether for money or um, they're giving them away. Largely women are participating in this. And so there's been some really interesting dialogue around um, whose labor is valued in this process and where these um, sewers are filling in for government uh, or a lack of government um, attention to basic human needs in this huge crisis that we're experiencing right now. I'm also interested in the communities that are built around home sewing. So um, I've been looking at a lot of makers on social media platforms like Instagram who share their body measurements, who share their makes, um, and the dialogue around that and how that can how that can provide resources to other makers and, um, as I mentioned, build community. So I think that by engaging with clothing in a more deliberate way, we're also expressing care for people, um, not to equate clothing with a human life, but I see the connection between, you know, um, all along the fiber food chain. So for example, um, people who are making clothes and people who are growing the fibers that end up being made into fabric, um, if the fabric is natural, for example. Um, so we are energizing, and I feel like what I want to do is energize um, the practice of making clothes. This is an essential and really intimate need to wear clothing. Um, and ultimately, I want to build a more intimate relationship between cloth and the body. I think that we all play a role in shaping systems the way that we want to see them and to trying our best to control the outcome of any given system um, and working against planned obsolescence or the expectation that something will die out or no longer be needed. Um, that's really the most significant part of this effort for me. And um, I really want to stress that I think anyone can sew. I know it's really daunting for a lot of people, but it's a tool that I think is, is really valuable. And um, I know I get a lot of satisfaction about uh, seeing people learn how to sew and, and to bring this skill into their daily life. I think um, I'm, I'm so inspired by everyday dress and the way that people choose to clothe themselves. Um, as a form of expression uh, in a, any way that they can express their authentic selves. So even if that's like putting on the same thing that you wore yesterday because you're running late, or if it's actually, um, you know, getting dressed up for a special occasion, that is a huge source of inspiration for me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, it's really fascinating. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing right now? Sure. So I have been sewing masks. Um, it's, you know, in the beginning, I would say in March, I was asked through my university to sew masks. Um, and I brought some students on board to help do that for local healthcare workers. And then we slowed that a bit because we understood that the need was bigger than us and that we really needed to see infrastructure built up um, and more attention and more money devoted to larger enterprises that could manufacture more and more masks. But I did work with some students later on in the summer um, or as the summer progressed to produce masks for our all of our facilities staff at Wayne State where I teach, um, which was a really intensive but hugely rewarding process um, that students were able to help with and were able to get scholarship funding. Um, so I was happy to be a part of that. Um, I'm lucky in that I've still been able to access my studio throughout all of this. So at this point, I'm continuing to work on uh, a project, McCall's 8616, that is um, one of the pieces in this ongoing series is a part of the art room exhibition. I'm really excited that it was, um, that you all selected it for this exhibition. Um, so I'm continuing to work on that project and in, in it, I'm remaking a blouse, um, um, the, the blouse pattern that I mentioned over and over again um, as a way to explore the pattern as a dem democratic tool. Um, 
So I'm working on these blouses. I'm also sewing masks, but I'm being a little bit more intentional about the way um, that I'm sewing them and the amount of time that I'm devoting to that. Um, but, but that's what I'm working on now. Um, you can see more about Margaret on our online exhibition, Interchanging Lines, Constructing Homes at artroomfw.org.